I'd like to share my experience as a young health specialist working in my country's National Primary Healthcare Development Agency, especially around finding sustainable financing for maternal and child health interventions. I work to analyze the health indices of my country and try to find innovative ways of reducing these high numbers of maternal and child health mortality. And given the large population of my country, the number of deaths recorded for preventable maternal and child illnesses can be so high and often overwhelming. For example, compared to the US, the average Nigerian child is 20 times more likely to die before her fifth birthday. This picture even gets more disheartening with the wide disparities between and within socioeconomic groups and geographies in the country. So therefore, a bulk of my work revolves around painting vivid pictures with data and trying to build strong investment cases with the hope of influencing policies to increase investments in the health sector through multi-level stakeholder engagement and advocacy. However, even in my role, I work closely with the communities and in health facilities. And I often find myself getting lost in these numbers and losing track of the people and the stories that inform these numbers. There's a quote by Maya Angelou that says, there's no greater agony than bearing an untold story inside you. And this is, this is what fueled my work today, and that is what I want to share with you. I had an encounter in one of my visits to the community primary health care centers in one of the states in my country. I was faced with a woman and her baby who she just ran into the hospital with. The baby was about two years old, looking very feeble and sick. And upon examination, he was diagnosed with severe malaria and anemia. He was in dire need of a blood transfusion. Unfortunately, the health center didn't have the capacity to do that, so they referred her to the nearest general hospital. At that moment, I saw the woman's head drop and head straight back out and into the village because she didn't have the money to carry out the procedure. Luckily for us, there was a medical doctor on ground who sent for her to be brought back and he was, while he was trying to set up the blood transfusion. Sadly, we lost that baby. Now, the account of that day really struck with me because I had recently become a mother myself and I cannot even bear to imagine the fact that I would lose my child because of financial, because of geographic barriers to healthcare. And as a mid-level mid -level government worker, I am faced with varying levels of bureaucratic challenges, which include dealing with multiple lines of communication and authority. And a major concern I've, I have always had since joining the fellowship was how to effect measurable change within this complex setup of a government-run project on health equity. How could I have brought what I saw, into, what I saw that day into an action, into my day-to-day -day work, while tackling the obstacles sometimes being faced working in the government as a government employee? However, with lessons learned during the course of the fellowship, I knew I had the power I had the power to bridge that gap between, between the government and the people. Because really, what is the meaning of crunching all these numbers if the child becomes just a statistic in, one, in, in the health index of the country? For this reason, I have changed my project midway this year to focus on providing a platform with the help of the Atlantic Fellows community, including senior fellows and my mentor. I launched a non-profit organization called the Partners for Health Equity, where we use the power of storytelling to increase awareness for health equities faced by Nigerians and work to reduce barriers, such as financial and geographic, to accessing care within communities, such as the one that I had visited. Our goal in Partners for Health Equity is to provide a platform where we can showcase the inequities faced by these poor households in accessing healthcare through community-centered and patient, community-led and patient-centered approaches. We believe that by telling narratives of people and their stories, amplifying the voices of women and children in rural communities and the underserved areas, we aim to promote an access to quality healthcare for all. Everyone has a story. And if we do not take time to know that person's story, 
just like that woman. We lose the chance to understand what they really need and to provide for that. As health equity leaders, we should strive to advocate, to educate, and to harness our individual assets to build partnership towards a more just and an inclusive health system. I believe that as, as a global community of health leaders, as a global community of health, part, health equity partners, we can collectively build power, amplify the voices of the unheard, and use the power of storytelling to make sense of, that, of those numbers so that the, the next child will not just be a statistic. Yeah,